Welcome back to Drinks Coach at Drinks Coach UK on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, do ask me some questions. We're going to try and pull the best questions together for a question and answer session each Friday. Um, see how that goes. So uh, just get on social media. Ask me anything you want. No question is too weird. Um, today, guten Tag. What are we talking about? Riesling. I'm um, sorry about the accent. It's not very racist because for those people who know me, I'm half kraut. So, uh, yeah, um, I love German wines. Uh, my first formative memory of drinking what was fine wine was lying on my tummy when my dad came back from work. He was a chef with a bowl full of salted radishes, cubed up gouda uh, and a glass of 1976 Rheingau Auslaser, which is a fancy vintage of a, a very sweet, fancy wine. Delicious, like amber nectar while uh, watching Liverpool on the big match. Um, halcyon days. Uh, we miss you, Dad. Um, so, uh, what I've got here is three different Rieslings. They just happened to have... They, they were just in the cupboard, so I thought, three Rieslings? That's a show. Okay. So let's start off with this one. I'm um, trying to show different styles of Riesling and show that maybe not as all as it seems. This is... I don't know if you see that. Tingle Up Riesling. 2019. Tingle Up um, is um, uh, a name of a, I think I, I think I don't know if it's a dedicated vineyard, but um, it's a uh, wine made by one of the finest Riesling producers in Australia. Yes, Australia makes a lot of very fine Riesling, mostly very dry, bone dry, viscerally so. Um, wonderful, light perfumes, aromatic, uh, and in Mount Barker in Western Australia, which is a good few hours drive south of Perth is a producer called Howard Park. And Howard Park Riesling is just dreamy. Uh, when I visited Australia for the first time back in 1994, we were fortunate enough to actually go and visit. And it's one of my favourite dry Rieslings in the world. It's quite something. And, and uh, they've been making under contract in this region, which is called the Great Southern in Australia. Um, they've been making a Riesling for Tesco since the early 90s. Um, I remember when it was 3 I mean, that's because you couldn't give Riesling away. But things have changed. Um, this wine... I think it's around the tenner. Yes, James, I should have checked the prices before I started filming. But check in the YouTube pull-down banner, it'll tell you. Uh, but this is available in virtually all main t Tesco. Um, and this is uh, the the new vintage, which I'm all very, all very excited about. I've kept some of these for 10 years and drunk them, and they've been absolutely sublime. So this is made by Howard Park, uh, and it's called Tingle Up. There we go. What do you have here? Well, first thing I smell is what I hope to find in Australian uh, Riesling, because some of them can smell actually almost too technical. This wine has a smell of flowers, uh, white waxy flowers. I mean, on, on Wandsworth Common the other day, uh, Emma, my wife and I were discussing a, a big magnolia tree that was there and the smell because there's no traffic, has been incredible. And you can smell trees from hundreds of metres away, which you didn't even know were there before. And this has a smell of magnolia, white lily almost. And there's a smell of somebody putting PLJ. Do you remember that? So like a, a cordial called pure, pure lemon juice or roses lime cordial, something like that. It doesn't taste completely dry. I think it might be just a tingle of sweetness in there, a few grams, not that you'd notice. But it's got a lovely, tart, toothsome pithiness to, to it. Um, if you've ever had a uh, Maya lemon or a citrus fruit, which is a little sourer than something like a clementine, but you can actually eat the pith, it's got a nice pithiness to it. It'd be fantastic with um, oily fish or prawns, um, maybe a slaw made with Asian um, dressing or something. Anyway. Very nice wine, as always. Uh, one of my go-to wines if I happen to be near a Tesco. Um, next up, this is a wine. This is more like it, don't you think? This is a Bassermann Jordan. Um, proper German label, that. Um, I don't know if we can get right close up, but you can see what it says on it. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I don't buy German wine because I read the label and it, it's just too confusing. Well... I think that's a cop-out because German labels have more information on them than any others. It says, Bassmann Jordan Riesling, that means it's Riesling, Trocken, which means it's dry, 2018. On the back, it tells you the alcohol level. It tells you how much bottle wine's in the bottle or like anything else. It also says, 
Gutsabfüllung, Weingut, Geheimer Rat Dr. von Bassemann Jordan, GmbH. Um, Gutsabfüllung means that the winemaker has to have had a winemaking degree at a recognized university and made wine for five years. So you get more information probably on a bottle of German wine than anything else, but is that a surprise? Uh, the detention since the detail. Okay, so let's open this. This was very kindly given to me um, by uh, a lady called Iris Elman, um, who is uh, currently struggling. She um, has a wine company called The Wine Barn that sells no rubbish, some quite premium and quite pricey wines too, but she's been selling fine German wines to the London restaurant trade for about 20 years. And she's like 90% restaurant exposed and she is really struggling. So um, if you want to give a shout out, you want to try something really special and, and trust me, they're all very, very good wines. Um, look up what the wine barn, um, if you like German wines, because German, German wine arguably produces the finest value wine in the world at the moment, because none of them are really crazy expensive, but they give everything a run for its money. If you like Pinot Noir and Burgundy. Germany's the third largest grower of Pinot Noir in the world now. Uh, a lot of people didn't see that happening. So, Bassemann Jordan is a wine a winery, a vineyard in the Pfalz, P-F-A-L-Z, down in the bottom area of wine growing in what used to be loosely called Western Germany. Um, and uh, around Didesheim and uh, Rupertsberg. And uh, they've been making wine since about the 1730s, maybe maybe 1750s, um, and very famous they were too. E even going back, it's not from the Rheingau or the Mosel, which always seem to be the most prestigious wine regions in Germany, but at the Treaty of Versailles, to toast the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, to tie off the Franco-Prussian War, this is what they were drinking. So very, very, very historically important wine as well as anything else. Um, and the wines are, well, let's have a look, rather lovely. Ah, oh, that smell. It smells of... If you walk past a, a wall which has got honeysuckle and it's it's autumn and it's a little bit damp and you walk past and it's not until you walk past the wall that your nose fills with that honey of honeysuckle, the little kind of slight fruity element. Oh, it makes my mouth water. There's lots of body. It's only 12% alcohol, this wine. It's a, again a kiss of, of sweetness, maybe 6%, but this is dry. Well over 90% of German Riesling is dry, and it's drunk by Germans. Um, it seems to me that the English are the only people still drinking the sweet stuff. But that's not to say there aren't special wines. I think the Germans are going, oh, Cabernet, which is kind of a sweet wine, or QBAs or, or, or Spanish. There's no, there's no room for those wines anymore. We just drink dry wines. Well, I disagree, because Germany does it better than anybody else. And I don't really want to see German, Germany throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So let's have a look at the last wine. This is called Mineralstein, 2019 Riesling. I bought this at Marks and Spencers yesterday. And uh, another wine from the Pfalz. Um, I was trying to find something from a different region, but we can we can go we can deep dive German Riesling in due course. We can do anything we want. So this wine, I think, uh, if I remember, I'm such a tard for not writing this down. I think it was nine pounds. So this is hardly going to break the bank. Oh, by the way, the Bassman Jordan wine was £16.15, pence, I think, um, which is fantastic value for money. Anything under £20 for a wine like that, you're laughing. Um, so this is made by a guy called Matthias Gaul uh, in the Feltz. Um, his winery, in conjunction with uh, a friend who actually lives in Wandsworth, his name is Dr. Gert Stepp, and he was a winemaker. that used to be a winemaker slash buyer for Marks and & Spencers, and he makes this wine. And he's a brilliant little winemaker. He's very entertaining, very intelligent man. And um, yeah, so a shout out to uh, my friend Gert. Uh, and they make a whole range of wines. But this, this wine has been made for Mark Spencer. It used to be made at a cooperative where Gert's father used to work called the Feierjahrzeiten Cooperative or Winzer, which means the Four Seasons Winery, which I thought was very lyrical. Um, but I think this wine is now made between them. Uh, um, and and a very very good wine it is too. So so why have I chosen this having had already a Feltz? Well, it's 2019, and I think there's a different pleasure in drinking Riesling when it's really young. Yeah, it smells of freshly sliced pineapples and kiwi fruit. This wine has sweetness to it, but not sweet sweet. You couldn't drink a dessert. You couldn't eat a dessert with this. But a plate of um, chili food. 
hot and sour soup, sweet and sour prawns, um, maybe a curry. This is perfect for some slightly spiced chilli food, especially with a bit of green or, or red raw chilli in it. What can I say? That reaches parts that otherwise just cannot reach. Um, perfect Asian food. And what we're drinking, what we're eating now, it's all pretty much um, Far Eastern food now. So we have a dry Riesling from Australia, Tingle Up from the Great Southern, south of Perth, Western Australia. We had Bassman Jordan, it's just called Riesling Trocken, which is a mixture of all their vineyards in the Pfalz in Germany. Another dry wine, and at the end, a wine which I think we, we would describe as fine herbst or halbtrocken. It's off dry, very refreshing on a hot daylight today. Uh, absolutely delicious. Thanks very much. See you next time. <laughs>